Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zolani. I use they them pronouns. This is the third video in my Hoodoo Basics series here on YouTube and today I will be speaking about the significance of offerings that we leave on our ancestral altar and I will also speak about how those offerings can turn and transform our altar into a place of power. If you're enjoying these teachings, make sure that you go to my website and sign up to be notified for when my Hoodoo Foundations course applications open up. I will be teaching that course starting in March of 2023. I'm so excited to have a small group of black folks who are wanting to learn and utilize these lessons, these rituals, this wisdom, and these tools and incorporate them into their daily life. I would love to enrich and nourish your spirituality through teachings of the ancestors. Go to my website and sign up now. All right, y'all, I truly want to make this video short and sweet. So we're just going to go through the elements real quick and the offerings that would equate to those elements. So starting with the element of fire, this one is pretty straightforward. I'm only going to speak about candle magic. There are other fire things that you could do. However, we'll save that for the Hoodoo Foundations course. For now, I want you to know that using or utilizing candles on your ancestral altar helps to direct your ancestors attention to a specific thing. It also can act as a lighthouse guiding your ancestors to your altar. In this way, knowing that they will show up because they have a light that guides them to this particular place is one way to make your altar a place of power. You know that they are attracted to the light. With that being said, sometimes other spirits can be attracted to it as well. So make sure that you dedicate your candle to your ancestors or honorable ancestors only. Next up is water. So in all of my studies, I was taught that water is a portal. It's also a conduit and it can carry particular energies, right? So on the altar, water can represent cleansing, it can represent connection, and sometimes water can even wash away your enemies. Think about the qualities that water has within it. Now on your ancestral altar, when you place it there, again, I like to utilize it as a portal. This is why you want to make sure that you change your water quite often and take a look and make sure that it's not getting cloudy or foggy. Now, with that being said, if your water does get cloudy or foggy and you feel like it's getting that way very fast, like you just switched it out and a few hours later it's cloudy that might be your ancestors trying to communicate with you and tell you or inform you of something if you don't already have a method of communicating with your ancestors it might be time to get a divination now sometimes some people say that if you find bubbles in your water that your ancestors are present or spirit is present I find this to be mostly true but I don't want anyone to to get worried if they see that there's not water or, or bubbles in their water that's okay. Sometimes your ancestors are already, they've already quenched their thirst. <laughs> They're already hydrated. Just make sure that the water is clean and clear. That is the most important. All right, next is air, the air element. So we find the air element a few different ways. I'm gonna speak about two at the ancestral altar. The first is incense. I love incense and spirits love uh, strong fragrances as well. Throughout history, throughout cultures, we see people using frankincense, myrrh, camphor, pine, sage, uh, sweet grass even, all types of different incenses to bless the space, to cleanse or clear the space as an offering as well, or even as an activator. So you can use your incense in this way. When I light my incense and then blow it out and let it smoke, I like to speak to that smoke and say, carry my prayers up into the ancestral realm or carry my prayers up into the heavenly realms. Speaking of, the second thing that I'll speak about regarding the air element is prayer. Remember that prayer is is an offering and it is completely free. It's also one of the most intimate forms of connection that you can utilize with your chosen deities, divinities, and with your ancestors. Now, I love the air element portion in the Hoodoo Foundations course. It is one of my favorite classes that I have ever taught. So if you're ready to learn more about prayer and the power and intimacy of prayer, make sure you sign up for the course. Finally, the earth element. Like I said, I wanna make this video pretty short and sweet. So within the earth element, you have so many different options. I am just 
just going to speak about two and that's going to be food and flowers okay with food you always 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 want to give food to your ancestors whenever you can it's best to do it on a regular schedule perhaps once a week but food represents sustenance it is energy it's ashe it's power it is the fuel that keeps us going and offering a bit of that to our ancestors is saying i am sacrificing this bit of ashe because i want our ashe our connection to be deeper to grow right to be more grounded and stronger more fortified now also consider how much we center food in our cultures and when i say our cultures i actually mean pretty much all people of color center food as as like a locus for community, for connection, for conversation. I know that when I set out a good plate on my ancestral altar, my ancestors come out and it feels almost like a party, like the, the atmosphere changes and I can kind of hear them chattering, I get goosebumps and you know, different temperatures are flowing and they really start chatting up. Like think about, you know, being at Friendsgiving or Thanksgiving with uh, loved family members, right? Think of, um, you know, Sunday brunch. Think also about, you know, uh, Sunday dinner after church or after service. These are the places where we communicate. So if you're really trying to get your ancestors talking, make sure you put out some food for them to eat. Now, if you can't give a whole plate, don't worry, your ancestors understand. They already know your financial situation or your living conditions if they don't allow for you to put food out. One thing that Ye Ye Fini taught me is to take a bite of your food, place it in a napkin, just bless it and dedicate it to your ancestors. You would set that aside and it is okay to throw it away at the end of your meal. So quick tip here, if you love giving food and your ancestors really enjoy food offerings, you might want to study food ways or culinary geographies and just study that and see how that influences your practice and offerings. The final thing I wanted to speak about in the earth element was giving flowers. So flowers is a beautiful, uh, heartfelt offering that you can give to your ancestors. Ancestors and multiple spirits love flowers. They love the floral aromatics. It's very attractive to spirits. So again, be careful, make sure you dedicate it to your ancestors, but it's like giving your ancestors their flowers in that metaphorical sense. It's honoring them, appreciating them, and it shows a lot of gratitude. So a few closing notes. On episode four of the Blue Bottle Tree podcast, I speak about our elemental ancestors. I want to make it clear that they are not just our ancestors. These are also our elemental descendants. So until we perish from this earth or we transform from, you know, these, these carbon based life forms who are dependent upon the earth for its nourishment, we are going to be utilizing these elements day in and day out, lifetime in and lifetime out. I want to make it clear that these things we inherited from our ancestors and we are going to leave them for our descendants. They will inherit the earth from us. Now, this is super important because if you understand that concept of energy and how energy never dies, we understand that this is a continuation of Ashe. So these offerings that I'm leaving on the ancestral altar are infused with the same Ashe that nourished my ancestors. This is the same Ashe that will nourish our descendants, blood or otherwise, the people who again inherit the earth from us. This understanding, this concept, and infusing it into your offerings is what transforms the offering from mundane into divine. And there's that bridge, right? That understanding, that knowing. Zora Neale Hurston said, Is it safe for me to say that baptism is an extension of water worship as a part of pantheism, just as the sacrament is an extension of cannibalism? Isn't the use of candles in the Catholic Church a relic of fire worship? Is not the Christian ritual rather one of attenuated nature worship in the fire, water, and blood? Might not the frequently mentioned fire of the Holy Ghost not be an unconscious fire worship? May it not be a deification of fire? She continues her observation in of mules and men claiming that black ritual practices 
adapts itself like Christianity to its locale, reclaiming some of its borrowed characteristics to itself, such as fire worship, as signified in the Christian church by the altar and the candles and the belief in the power of water to sanctify as in baptism. Using these elements is a continuation of the rituals, rites, and practices that our ancestors participated in. Leaving these offerings helps them to recognize what your intention is, recognize what you are doing, and lend their energy toward it. This helps to transform your altar into a place of power. I'll tell you all something that was told to me in an Ifa divination. When you leave your offerings, make sure that you ask your ancestors to feed on the offerings and not feed on you. Now, this happens not maliciously, but oftentimes when ancestors need ashe, they need power to, to move something or to intervene on your behalf, they, they need the ashe, they need the power, right? So if we leave these offerings, they'll feed on that and that is what will strengthen them and help power up your rituals, your petitions, your prayer requests, instead of them feeding or nurturing on you, your energy, your ashe, because that can take away from you. And again, it's not malicious, it's not malign. They're not trying to harm you. It's just that sometimes they need the ashe, the energy to move and do some things in order to help you. With that being said, make sure that you leave offerings on a consistent and sustainable basis. That means it does not have to be every single day that you're leaving something on your altar, but try to do something once a week. If you're having longer conversations with your ancestors or you are asking for bigger things, make sure you match that in your offerings. As a final note, Yes, give your ancestors offerings. Yes, these offerings help to make your altar a place of power. And don't forget to ask for exactly what you need. You in the land of the living need offerings as well. You need care, you need service, you need money, you need medicine, you need food, you need love. So as you give these offerings and build relationship with your ancestors, don't forget to ask for what you need as well and be open to receiving how the offerings come to you. Thank you so much for lending your time, energy, and attention toward this video. I genuinely hope that you enjoyed it. The next installment in the Hoodoo Basics series here on YouTube is going to be about the different roles within Hoodoo and who can be a Hoodoo. So I will see you all in the next video. For now, take care.